Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start talking about a new gun project we're going to do. It's a Stevens model 1915. It's also called the Stevens Favorite. The one I have is chambered in 22 long rifle. Um, and it needs some work. But to show you what's going to happen to that gun, I want to give you a preview of a project I did a couple years back when I was first starting off on my channel. And I didn't get this on video and I've always felt kind of bad about it. But these two builds are almost the same. So I want to show you this gun so that you'll know what's going to happen to that gun. So here it is close up and I'll try to put some still pictures in here too so you can see it a little better. I bought this gun for $84 from my local gun store down here, Fall City Firearms in Fall City, Washington. Greatest little gun store there is. But anyway, um, when I bought it, this thing was in pretty, pretty tough shape. You couldn't see any case coloring left on the receiver. The barrel was was had a lot of dings in it, and it was half browned out. The stock would just look terrible. Um, the finish was peeling off of it. Basically, uh, it didn't really have. It had a it had an old butt cap, a whole hard plastic butt cap on it, but the butt cap was not original to the gun and didn't fit. It was it was about a quarter inch too big in a couple of directions. Um, and the fore end stock was all beaten up too. Um, so anyway, this thing went off to Al Springer at Snowy Mountain Blue in Moore, Montana. And uh, the wood all stayed here with me. I did the woodwork myself um, and I fitted the butt pad. Uh, Al case colored the receiver and he did the bluing on the trigger guard, the trigger and the barrel and the case hardening on the receiver or the hammer and the beaver tail parts um and then he sent all the stuff back to me there is still one ding left in this barrel that he couldn't get out and it's right there i don't i'm trying to get this so you can see it it's a really deep gouge it's like this thing fell down and, and hit a really hard rock or something um it didn't go through to the inside of the barrel but the gouge itself is deep enough he couldn't get it out and that's really the only defect left on this gun in other words, this thing is basically a brand new shotgun from 1905. That's the year it was built. Um, so this gun is actually at least 10 years older than the Stevens we're going to work on here shortly. Now I call this bad boy Grandpa's Old Shotgun. Even though it never belonged to my grandpa, um, I just had it in my mind when I bought it that this was somebody's grandpa's shotgun. And, and the old man probably died and the kids ran down to the gun store and sold it just as soon as they could so they could get their money and go buy an iPhone or whatever the hell they want. Um, so anyway, I was saying I did the stock work on this and I, I was pretty happy with how it came out. And I fitted this pad. I bought this pad, I believe, from Midway. This is an old, uh, it's a red pad and it is a Packmeyer decelerator. Um, and it's the only red pad I could find actually too and I think on an older gun like this if you're gonna have a rubber recoil pad uh, red is kind of the natural color it's kind of what they were using back then so that's how this gun come out and I actually gonna go shoot some video with this thing and just just blow some stuff up I might get me some pumpkins and go hammer them with this bad boy even though with that old drop stock on it boy she kicks like a mule but uh this thing deserves to be on video so let's have a good peek at the new project gun we got coming. Alright everybody, here's our model 1915. As you can kind of see, it's in, it's in a little bit of tough shape, but the parts are all there. The metal's not extraordinarily damaged. One of the things that worries me a little bit is that this lever is really floppy. And it doesn't want to stay when you close the action. Uh, the wood has definitely seen better days. Now this originally had a curved plastic butt cap on it. Um, I found another one on Gunbroker for 20 bucks, a reproduction. And I ordered it right away, right on, on the spot. And a pair of screws as well. I think I got a still photo of that to show you guys. Um, got some stamping up here that says model of 1915. And then it says right up here, trade the trademark on top. It says Stevens. It says favorite in big letters. And below that, there's some stuff that's kind of a little bit worn away. But I'm going to see if Al can bring that back. Up on the barrel here, you got J. Stevens Arms Company, uh, Chicopee Falls Mass. There was a lot of great guns that come out of Chicopee Falls, including that other shotgun I just had, that Springfield. 
and of course we're stamped a 22 long rifle which means this gun is a great gun for use today because uh, 22 is widely available even if it's way overpriced one other thing I like about this is, is this front sight here has a little silver blade in it uh, I really kind of like that so um, we're gonna go ahead and show you a couple of the other features of this gun here um, like all of the favorites it is a takedown gun by means of this screw right here you back this bad boy out then you can rotate this thing and take it right off right you can separate the receiver from the barrel and under here also is what I believe is our serial number it's right there which is F751 I don't know what that means particularly it could be favorite number 751 um, maybe if that's the case <laughs> it's a really early Stevens favorite probably the first or second year of production really but you can kind of see on this metal work here the color case hardening is all gone now this lever I believe was case hardened at one point this screw was blued the falling block was blued and the hammer was blued and these screws would have been blued too and these are a little buggered up I want to see if Al can bring those back from the dead and and uh, he can resurface these screw these screws and get rid of the bugger marks on there nothing worse than a buggered screw this is the other side of the stock and you can see that old finish is all gone off of there um, that plus that huge dent right there led me to just order a new wood set uh, which I found on eBay believe it or not for $109 and I've got a picture of that and when we replace the wood um, the first things that are going to happen is uh, I'll take the wood and the rifle action and the forearm set over to my gunsmith buddy Dave's house and he will bed the, the new stock uh, to this action it will he will completely fit the thing bedded in there because these old wood stocks like this that had these skinny wrists these are prone to breaking now it probably won't happen on this 22 but it would have happened on that 12 gauge and that stock it was uh on the inside he took some material out of there a little bit on the inside and filled it up with uh with composite bedding material so that stock is now brutally strong it'll it will not split it won't break so i'm happy about that uh, it will do the same thing to this rifle here and we'll bed the forearm as well why the hell not um, the other real problem about this barrel is that it's got some pretty substantial pitting in it um, now back in the day everybody would always tell you "Ooh, you don't ever have to clean a 22 rifle well you know you don't but what happens when you don't is that the thing corrodes and the barrel ends up pitted and going dark now this barrel still has some shiny spots in it but the majority of it's going dark and what al springer is going to do is he's going to send this barrel off uh to a guy he has uh, down in albuquerque i believe it is that relines barrels and he does a beautiful job and when this comes back this barrel will have an all new liner in it a new 22 long rifle liner it'll be recrowned all these little dings right here will be gone and you'll never be able to tell by looking at it that this that it's ever been screwed with um, it'll essentially be a brand new barrel from 1905 I mean, we got a bunch of scratches up here I don't know what happened with that this thing's definitely seen better days I'd like to get a uh, better front you can kind of see this front sights bent yeah this old guy has been hammered I'd like to have a, a little bit bigger silver blade on it that's for sure and we need a, a sight elevator for this bad boy here if we're going to use it but the other kind of fun thing about this rifle is that you got these little holes right here this appears to be drilled and tapped for a tang sight so i'm going to do a little research on that and we're going to see if we can't come up with something so anywho stand by hang out with us and Come back and check this out because in a couple months this rifle is going to be back on the channel again. And it'll be looking a whole lot better than it does now. <laughs> See you next time on Recoil Therapy.